Now I've summarised then the information we're given in the question. We've got a hundred people and these are how many people then like the various wines. And so for our opening question, part A, we've got to draw a Venn diagram then that represents this information. If you're not sure about Venn diagrams, just go on my website, look under Venn diagrams and you should find some tutorials with examples like these. Now, for a Venn diagram then, I'm going to draw my outer rectangle which represents all the people in the survey, 100 people, and I'd normally give that kind of symbol something like a squiggly E, the everything set, the universal set. And then we've got the different wines, A, B and C, so I would have three circles. You don't have to draw circles, you can draw any overlapping shapes that you like. So label them A, B and C, and then we've just got to start putting in the various numbers in the correct regions. And with something like this, always go to the end where you can put the value that you know in the one particular region and that's this 90, 90 like all three wines so we can clearly put that in that region there so that's 90 and then work backwards 93 like A and C so we've already got 90 like all three so that leaves us with three that just like A and C but not B okay so uh, what's next? 91. 91 like B and C. So that covers those two regions in there. So that's going to leave us just with 1. 92 like A and B. So that's 90 there. That leaves us with 2. And then 96 like Y and C. So already we've got 94 across these three regions. So that leaves us with 2 just liking C only. For B, we've got 93 like wine B, so already we've got 92 and that one 93. So that means that of those people liking B only, it must be 0. So that comes to 93. Now, 96 like wine A, so we've already got 93 and another 2, that's 95. So that means we've got 1 in here, 1 person liking A only. And what you've got to be very careful is that you just don't think that that's completed. Make sure that you check that the total of all of these numbers comes to 100. If it doesn't, then there must be some numbers out here. Well, if we add all of these values up, what you get is 99. So, in fact, there is one person left out of the 100 that doesn't like any of these wines. Okay? Now, let's get into answering the questions, the probabilities then. So, we'll start down here, B. We're asked, what's the probability that someone doesn't like any of the uh, three wines? So, I'd write an intro and I'd just write P for probability. Probability, none, we'll keep it short, none of the three wines, okay? Of the three wines. So what's that probability? Well, nice and easy, we can see that it's got to be this one, okay? This one person doesn't like any of the wines, and it's out of a hundred, so one hundredth. Okay, one hundredth, or as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.01. Okay, well that's B. What about C next? C asks us the probability they like A but not B. So again an intro, probability likes A but not B. So what's that going to be? So likes A but not B. So we've got to be outside of the B and likes A, well that's liking A but outside of B just gives us the 1 and the 3. So it's going to be a total of four people that like A but not B out of 100. So 0 0.04. For D, what's that one? For D, we've got to work out the probability that they like any wine except C. So we'll just put any wine except C. Okay. So 
any wine except C. Well, we've got C here, so any wine other than C, but it's just got to be this one here and this two here. Obviously, if there was a number in here, we would have counted that in as well. But it's just going to be a total of one and the two there, so that's three. Three out of 100, or as a decimal, 0 0.03. Okay, well this is fairly straightforward, I would have thought, so far. Let's just come down here now for E. So for E, we've got the probability that exactly two out of uh, the three wines are uh, um, liked. Okay, so we'll just say exactly two out of three, okay, are liked. So can we squeeze that in here, I wonder? Well, exactly two out of the three. Well, that's got to be this two here. These two people like just A and B, but not C. This one here has got to be one person likes B and C, but not A. And similarly, for the three here, three people like A and C, but not B. So, just got to add up the three, the two, and the one. Three, two, and one comes to 6, so it's going to be 6 out of 100, or simply as a decimal, 0 0.06. Okay, well that's that one, and then finally, F, okay, you can always tend to expect what these conditional probabilities towards the end of a question. And that's what we've got here, the probability that someone likes C given that they like wine A, okay? written like this. Now to do something like this you can do two ways but when you've got it in a Venn diagram I always find it's quite easy just to read it straight off the uh, diagram. The other way is to use a formula which I'll do in a moment but when you've got a Venn diagram I'll show you how it's done. We know that the people like wine A because we're told that they're that they given that they they like wine A, so we know that we're just concentrating on the number of people in A, which is a total of 96. Okay, so we're looking at those 96 people. So out of those 96 people, how many of them like wine C? Well, that's got to be these people in here, the 90 and the three out of A. They like wine C. So it's 93 then out of 96. You could cancel that down if you like. That's going to be equal to 31 then over 32. Or as a decimal it comes to exactly 0 0.96875 which you could round up if you want okay to say 0 0.969 to three decimal places. I'll leave it up to you. Now you could do it by the formula, okay? You should know that if you've got the probability of something given something else, okay, it's the probability that both events happen. That would be written as C and A. This symbol here is the intersection of the two sets C and A. It's the probability of both events happening divided by the probability of the given event. And in this case, that would be A conditional probability then. Again, if you're unsure of this, just look on my website for tutorials on conditional probability. Um, right, okay then, so with this, what's the probability of C and A? Well, C and A is this region in here, 90 and the 3, so it would be 93 out of 100 for that probability. Now it's divided by the probability that someone likes wine A. Well, there's 96 people that like wine A out of the 100. 96 out of 100. And can you see that if you multiply top and bottom of this fraction by the 100, you'll end up with 93 over 96. What we had before, okay, 93 out of 96. And you can write it either as 31 out of 32 or as the decimals. Leave it up to you. But there you go. There's the formula way that you could approach this problem.
But I only tend to use this method really when I've got tree diagrams and I'm given questions like this. Okay? So with Venn diagrams, you can read it just off the diagram straight away. Okay? Well, I hope that's given you some idea anyway how to do this particular question.